YouTube team keep it clean when I'm watching some of these guys I be trying to act like a coach so bad because my wife will come in the room and she'll be trying to start a conversation I'll be like hold on babe I'm watching film on these guys give me a minute but anyway team keep it clean Slade Bolden uh, the Ravens have signed yet another undrafted rookie free agent at the wide receiver position um, but the difference between a lot of the other guys that we went over like a Devin Williams a Mickey Amezi uh, Makai Polk this is the first one that we're going over that actually isn't over six foot three. Cause you know all them other guys, they them skyscrapers. Uh, but he's standing at five foot eleven. Um, but Slade Bolden from Bama, and you know Ozzy when they signed him, Ozzy was like, "Ha ha, we got another one, baby." And you know he gonna be pushing them, giving them that extra push, gonna be sneaking them extra snacks and stuff. Like, hey, Slade, I got you. I know where you come from. Now, Slade Bolden, first thing that stood out about him. His name, his name, like, he got one of the most fire first names in the league. Slade? Slade? Man. <laughs> hey, what's your name, big dog? Hey, I'm Slade. Okay, I got that little Channing Tatum vibe. Anyway, um, but then Bolden, the last name, because with Bolden, he, uh, he will already have won the hearts of so many Ravens fans from jump. Even though it's spelled with an E instead of an I, but still. But anyway, all right, let's, let's get more serious now. Let's put on our suit and tie in fix ourselves and make ourselves more presentable anyway Slade Bolden what stood out to me uh from him you ever been getting ready to marinate uh, and season you know, season some meat whether it be chicken whether it be steak whether it be fish whether, or whatever if you're getting ready to season something um you can think about you know what I want to try to season it with something new but I I'm a little afraid of how the taste is gonna come out I'm, I'm afraid that i might not like the flavor my family may not be feeling the flavor so uh you know what let me go to old reliable let me go to the season that i the seasoning that i know when i go to it is going to come through when i need it to in my opinion that was slade bolden that is his game he is mr reliable um, he does not have a big issue with drops. I know so many people going to tell you that Florida game. Look what happened in the Florida game. He dropped a wide open touchdown in that Florida game against some Gators. And he did. He did. There's absolutely no excuse. Wide open. Back of the end zone. Short touchdown. But that was not a, uh, a norm for him. Um, when I watched him catch the ball, like 98% of the time, 99% of the time, he, he has short hands. Um, and he is going to come down with the football. Um, he reminds me of sort of an undrafted rookie free agent version of a Devin Duvernay or a James Prochet. Now, when I say that, I do not mean that he has similar play styles to those guys because he doesn't. I, I don't see any resemblance between uh, him and them. But what, the reason I brought those two up is because they are known for catching the football. And I know you can say, oh, but hey, they're wide receivers. They're supposed to catch the football. That's obvious. Duh, what are you talking about, man? That's true. But they're also known for, more so known for not dropping the football. And Slade Bolden, again, besides the whole little Florida thing, you know. And there was another big job that he had in another game. I forgot which one it was. But he's not a known dropper. Uh, but anyway, you could tell Bryce... Bryce Young really uh, trusts Slade Bolden uh, and put a lot, um, yeah, just put a lot of stock into him. Um, and that was a, a go-to guy. And really just the whole Alabama offense, they, um, they really trusted him because they had, or really just Alabama, period, uh, because they had him doing a lot of different things. Now, um, when you think about their depth chart, like, man, he, because he was only on the field if they were going more spread offense, if they were if, if they had at least three receivers on the field, then he was out there. If they would go three receivers, four receivers. If it was just two receivers, then he wasn't out there. But that's not even a knock on him. That's just because with uh, they had uh, Jamison Williams, and I mean he went what what did he go like? I forgot what what overall he went in the first round. But they had him, and then they also had John Mechie. So they had they had those guys in front of him. So him being the, the third or fourth uh, receiving option is not a knock against him. It's just who was in front of him. Uh, and those guys were just, they were like that. Um, and not saying that he isn't, but th those were what was in front of him. Uh, so he was uh, 
pr- primarily a slot guy, I would say. He's a slot wide receiver. It's not the fastest. He ran a uh, a four six um, official four six a uh, uh, four five nine. But um, even when you watch his game film, like some guys, they will they'll run a slow forty or their forty won't be so fast. But then on tape, it'll be like, oh, oh no, this guy got some speed. What? He he's not really a he's not a burner. So Slade Bolden is not a burner. Uh, he's quick. Um, a little bit shifty, but he, he's he's quick, but not fast. Um, but again, the hands are there, uh, and he is a a decent yak guy too. Uh, so he's gonna get you a decent amount of yards after the catch. Um, now, if he had a little more burst, a little more speed, then I think he'd get some more. Um, but that's just not him. As a blocker, he's a decent blocker. Um, he, uh, he he just goes for it as far as a blocker. I think um, Bama's running back was it number four. I think it was number four. I, I forget, though. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I probably am in the comment section. But anyway, um, so when, when he would run a ball, and even when they did little, little screens and stuff, and they passed the other wide receivers and people out of the backfield and whatnot, and we watched Slay Bolden block, he not afraid to block. Like, some guys, like, even him being, like, a, a smaller stature wide receiver, even though he's 5'11", he ain't, nah, he ain't no smaller stature. I guess he average or whatever. But with, with his body frame, there's some receivers, when they block, they may just go, mm. They may just try to throw a little shoulder going, see, I tried. But he was engaged in using them hands. And y'all know, y'all see it. Y'all done seen it before. There's some receivers who like, no, I ain't blocking. I ain't doing that. You think I'm about to do it? No, I'm straight. Uh-uh. But he wasn't like that, so that, that's a good sign. Another thing about him, they will literally motion this dude uh, from anywhere on the field. Anywhere. He was lined up at outside receiver. They motioned him across the field. He lined up in the backfield. They motioned him. He was lined up in the slot. They motioned him. And I was, thinking, I was trying to put myself in his shoes. I'm like, man, if they, they doing all that pre-snap motion to me, I'm going to be like, coach, oh, I'm, I'm tired, man. I need a break. I'm, I'm tired. But that, that's me now. Me back when I was his age? No, nah, probably not. But anyway, I, I was just thinking about that. But um, it shows the fact that he would be in motion all those times and he'd still go full effort, full motor. Um, it shows his conditioning. Cause that's a big thing too, man. His his conditioning, but it also shows that they they were willing to use him in a lot of different ways. Now again, we talked about how he is a slot receiver. Uh, we're pretty sure hands, um, but he there was a lot of time he would catch passes out of the coming out of the backfield. Cause again, they they lined him up in so many different places. But he would catch passes coming out of the backfield, catch passes in the slot. He was um good at sort of finding finding a, a little holes in the zone or whatnot, just working in the middle of the field like like slot receivers do. That was him. A lot of people thought that he was going to end up with the Patriots. Because, you know, Mac Jones and, you know, uh, S- Slade Bolden, a little connection there. That a lot of people thought he was going to go there. Um, but it, it didn't end up happening. And, I mean, there's still time because it, he he is, he, like if you know Patriots receivers, he is a Patriots receiver all day, every day. That That is the criteria. That's him. That's him. So, for if any reason... For any reason, it for some it does not work out with the Ravens. I guarantee you, he's gonna end up in New England, without a doubt. He is going to end up. If if, if anything happens with the Ravens, he if he don't make the team or he don't make the practice squad or what whatnot, he is headed straight to New England. I, I don't. I think if they cut him before the it, say for instance, the worst case scenario for him if the Ravens were like I hey, hey slay big dog, it ain't working out. Then he would book a flight. To Boston before he even came in contact with the Patriots, because he would know, we would all know, hey, that that's where you headed. But anyway, with the Ravens, um, my opinion, best way for him to make the team, special teams, special teams. All right, we're gonna get into his number. You know what? Let's just get into his numbers now, um, because this will make the transition a lot easier. So, uh, with his numbers, they weren't overwhelming numbers, and um, I think part of his numbers, and I, I think a mix of his production. And his uh, 40, uh, I think, um, and just, I think there's, they could, they, he could use some more explosiveness. He could use a bit more. Um, and, and hey, he, he training with NFL people now. He can get that. And if he's going to be around T. Martin, Keith Williams, he can try to soak up as much knowledge as he possibly can and as much gain from them because they know how to get it out of somebody. And they got a very good eye for talent at wide receiver. Um, so, and then they can, they obviously train with the best and train the best, excuse me. So he could soak up as much knowledge and as much intel and insight from them as he possibly can to help take his game to a whole nother level. But anyway, to his game, 
2019, he had two catches for 34 yards. Um, but then, and so that was kind of like a wash. But then 2020, he had 24 catches for 270 yards. So he upped everything uh, by a lot. Um, and he had his first touchdown as well. But then in 2021, last year, he almost doubled his amount of catches. So he, had, he went from 24 to 42 catches, 2021, and he uh, got 408 yards um, and had three touchdowns. So solid. He, he was more so a, uh, a complimentary piece uh, of this offense, of, of Alabama's offense. But like I said, they would put him in a lot of different positions on the field at wide receiver, um, and they just had him doing a lot of different stuff. We were just talking about – how we feel like his best way to make the Ravens team would be via special teams. Now, when you look at his special teams, um, in 2020, as far as punt returns, he returned seven punts um, for 49 yards, his longest for 16. Uh, and then in 2021, he returned 14 punts for 87 yards, his longest was 25. Um, so he had that 25-yard that punt return. That was the longest one, and the other ones were pretty small. Um, but then also in 2021, he had five kickoff returns for 67 yards. Longest was 24. So um, he is one of those Mr. Do-It-All type of players. Hey, what you need me to do? Hey, how you need me to contribute? Hey, you need me to do that? Okay, I got you. Oh, you need me to do this? Okay, no problem. Oh, you need me to do that? That's fine. I I'll take care of it. And that is that is very uh, Raven-like as well. Uh, you know, John Harbaugh would love, 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 love people like that. And, and of course, Bill Belichick would as well. Um, but it would be special teams for him to make it. I think because um, I feel like right now with the Ravens, they have this sort of this log jam at a slot receiver um, because the number one guy, Rashad Bateman. All right. So that that's pretty much established for now. As, as of right now, where we stand at on May, May 9th. Uh, 2022, um, it, it seems like they have a log jam at slot receiver. Rashad Bateman will be the one. You can also move him to the slot, too, but he's going to be your, 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 your guy uh, for now. And, I mean, it's, it's expected that the Ravens bring in a veteran of some sort, uh, some way, somehow. It doesn't even, even feel like an if. It feels like a win at this point. But we'll see. But you have Rashad Bateman. Uh, but number two, who's going to be your number two receiver? Well, your number two receiver because Ravens offense. It's going to be Devin Duvernay. It's going to be Tylen Wallace. It's going to be James Prochet. It's going to be somebody else. Who, who is it going to be? We just, we don't know right now. You would think that it could be Devin Duvernay because he's had the most experience uh, on offense and being out there with the offense more than, obviously more than the Prochet and obviously more than uh, Tylen Wallace, who was a rookie last year. But just don't know right now. We don't know because so much depends on how the Ravens move. But as of right now, um, excuse me, you have a lot of slot guys. You have a lot of guys that could play the slot. So it's, it's, it's kind of crowded there. So he would have to probably find another avenue uh, to make the team if he's going to make it. So I think standing out on special teams. Uh, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be in a return game as far as him being a returner. But him being somebody who's blocking him, covering kicks, him covering punts, if he's a gunner or something like that, that would be his way. You know Ravens, they value special teams. A lot. And special teams is important. Uh, but for the Ravens, it's like important, important. I mean, John Harbaugh, yeah, he used to be a defensive backs coach. But he really was a special teams coordinator. And he, he has brought that. Ever since he came to the Ravens, he brought that. And he brought that over and um, just really showed how much he cares about special teams. I mean, Ravens, they got the best kicker in the game in Justin Tucker. Probably the most coolest kicker, too. Um, they, oh, well, that just reminded me of Sam Cooke's situation since the Ravens, they drafted the punt in the fourth round, Stout. Um, so that's, oof, that's going to be something. So, I mean, you see the writing on the wall. Shout out to Sam Cooke, though. Been with the Ravens for literally, like, forever. Y'all remember Dave Zastadil? Y'all remember him? No, that's a little bit of a throwback, but Dave Zastadil, I remember him, that, that, that punter from back then. Um, but anyway, uh, the Ravens, they, they really value special teams a lot, and Harbaugh, he has an eye for special teams. And that's how a lot of players, uh, they end up getting more playing time through special teams. Uh, we've seen, obviously, a lot of late-round draft picks. Well, uh, first-round draft picks, too. Early picks, too. Marlon Humphrey plays special teams. Air Reed plays special teams. Like, guys, they have to play special teams. That, that's, that's a part of the Ravens. Um, so, even Hollywood, or at least not, not in a... 
obviously not in the regular season. They they tried it in in in, in the preseason. They're like, ooh, no, no, no. He, they put him in punt return. He dropped them punts. So, oh, no, 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 no. We we ain't doing this no more. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that that would be his best way to make it. Now, um, in the return game, I wonder because again, a, a lot could change because it's only May 9th. They could sign a veteran like that, and this would automatically be changed big time. But right now, I would expect Devin Duvernay, his role to increase on offense. And, and maybe they start really using him like a wide receiver and not just a jet sweep king, not just a gadget guy. But they actually use him as a wide receiver. Maybe use him in a screen game more, implement a screen game. That'd be nice. Um, but if they use him as a wide receiver more. So I wonder if he has an increased role on offense if that would decrease his role on special teams, like at kick return, like at punt return. Now, it, that would be kind of iffy, uh, but that'd be kind of iffy because he was just all pro at kick return um, last year. But, so I don't know, we'll see. But again, I, we all expect him to bring in a veteran. So Duvernay will probably have end up having the same role that he's had over the past couple of seasons. So I wouldn't really expect for his role to change on special teams, but it everything just depends on how the Ravens move moving forward. Um, but anyway, so shout out to uh to Slade Bolden. Uh I had fun watching him, fun watching Bama. Um I know Ozzy had a lot of fun evaluating him as a player. Uh because you know Ozzy, like they <laughs> they Bama be slipping him all the extra tape and all the extra film and stuff on all those guys. Um, they, he, he, you know, he plugged in with them, been plugged in with them literally for forever. Uh, but it's all good. So anyway, appreciate y'all. Love y'all team. Keep it clean. Oh, a little bonus. Um, this is actually not my first time recording this video today. Uh, because we recorded this video earlier, had a lot of fun recording it earlier, went to go play it back earlier. And there was no sound with the video earlier because my mic had died early and I hadn't even known. So I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, that's, that's the start to this morning. Uh, but it's all good. Stuff happens and stuff could be far worse. It is not a big deal at all. Just wanted to share that with y'all. Anyway, love you. Love you a bunch. Hope everything's going good. Hope your Monday's good. Hope your week goes great. And we out.